Hello there, friends. Welcome to episode eight of Grits and the Gospel. My name's Reverend Katie Griffiths. Um, I am still shocked that I have eight episodes worth of things to say. Um, but continually I've inspired. I should know better. God is, is um, active in his relationship with me these days with uh, sermons and with um, things to share. And I'm so thankful for it. I'm happy and thankful and grateful to be a vessel. Uh, so today I thought I would talk about what it means to find some Sabbath. Uh, we're going to start with uh, the one of the very first times we see this concept. It is throughout the Old Testament, anytime um, the writers of the law were talking about how to live as a good, um, faithful uh, member of the Israelite family. Uh, they wrote about this many times, but I chose um, Leviticus 23, 3 to start off our time today um, because I like the, the way it is structured. So Leviticus 23, verse 3 says, For six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of complete rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work. It is a Sabbath to the Lord throughout your settlements. There's a lot to take in in that, um, in that verse. And we'll talk about a lot of it. But um, this first, the idea first came to me, not um, when I was in full-time ministry, but long before that. Um, well, not long, actually. This was kind of a quick process for me. Um, but I have always lived a life of, like, better busy than bored. Go, 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 go. Um, go to the concerts. Go to dinners. Do the things. See the friends. Work hard. Play hard. Enjoy your life. But just never stop. And, um... Even that whole too much is given, much is expected <laughs> concept that was um, kind of our family motto um, is in, you know, feeds into that thought that you have to constantly go because you've been given so much. I'm not just talking about monetary things. I'm talking about like you've been blessed in so many ways. You somehow owe all of your time and effort back. And while that is a very very good concept in so many ways, and I'm thankful for that example. It doesn't leave much time for renewal. And even at church, um, I found myself doing that same thing. Um, I was always on something. I was on the board of trustees, or I was you know, doing this or that or the other on the security team, or doing the um, altar or, you know, Advent, decorating the whole church, or it was always work. I was always behind the scenes making everything else run smoothly. And I thrive there. That's where part of my gifts are. I appreciate that very much. It's what I do now um, at Candler Chapel, at uh, Cannon Chapel at Candler School of Theology. And I help just make that um, whole thing go well, and I'm happy to do it, and I love doing it. But it still doesn't leave much time to sit. So um, part of my journey was to go through the lay um, servant and then the certified lay minister process. And part of that process means you have to gather a group of people at your home church and have them kind of be your advisory board. And it's a wonderful thing that they do and the way they do it in South Georgia. And I'm just thrilled that I had that opportunity and that God put me on that path with those people because um, it is people that I love and trust very much and that I respect very much. And so when my friend Julia, who was on my little group that was to keep me accountable, looked at me and said to me, when do you find Sabbath, Katie? 
And I said, well, you know, I go to church on Sunday. She said, church is work for you. It is turned into, and it is work for you. And that's not a bad thing. It is just what it is. You are good at it. It's what you should be doing, but it is not Sabbath. And she pushed me to say, where are you finding Sabbath? When do you Sabbath? When do you take a moment to sit? When do you rest? When do you find time for yourself? I mean, I, it was just revolutionary to me. It should not have been, but it was <laughs> revolutionary. And I appreciate her so much in so many ways for so many different reasons. She's um, one of my very smartest friends in a lot of ways. But saying that to me really opened my eyes to the thought that I do need to find that. Thank goodness um, I chose to go to Candler in so many ways. I'm so thankful to be there. But what it allows me to do when I'm on campus, my first year I was very diligent about going twice a week because I was there twice a week. I'm not there as much this semester. Um, but I make the time to go to chapel and sit in the pew and be ministered to. That is one way that I find Sabbath, is to be fed into. To sit and absorb others' thoughts and ideas and revelations of God in a pew. Nobody told me, and I, I know I've said this on the podcast before, and it's so true, but nobody tells you when you get the call to go to ministry that you are, pro if you're a full-time pulpit pastor, you're not going to be able to sit in a pew again. And so finding those times and those ways to fulfill in me that time that I used to get in the pew listening to sermons has been um, interesting you know, we, I'm not a big listen to sermon online person. I do that some. Um, I think it's mainly because I'm in school right now and I have to listen to lectures a lot. There's something about those sitting in a chapel or sitting in a church in a worship service that is so different than this format, <laughs> than being online. And sometimes that's just not possible, so that's what we have. But I, I really find that that helps me renew. Um, and that's kind of what Sabbath is about. Now, it's not fully about that. If we look at the verse, um, it should be a whole day of complete rest. <laughs> I like to see it as that holy convocation as well. And that's really what I have craved, is what that phrase means, holy convocation. If you look um, on my one of my favorite websites, is the Step Bible. Um, if you look on that site, it gives you the original Greek and Hebrew words. And if you look at that verse, it is a calling together and a sacred assembly. So on that seventh day, we are to come together in a sacred assembly and we are to get complete rest and do no work. So I find that I can't do all those things in one day anymore. So I look for ways to find that holy communion, that holy convocation. And I also look for ways to rest. Now, are there times when I can make both work at the same time? Rarely, but yes. But it's finding those times where I can be renewed in many ways that is so important. And I think it's not just important for ministers. It's important for all of us. For mothers with small children, I don't know how you do it. For mothers with teenagers, I really don't know how you do it. For fathers who are stay-at-home dads or work all the time, rest and holy convocation are so necessary to help sustain a healthy life in our spiritual life and in our physical life as well. Uh, what I have found, too, that helps me tremendously is some creative outlets and different 
um, sources of rest and community. One that I am starting very soon uh, and I'm very excited about. I will be at a retreat coming up in October for my new S3 group. It is a group um, of women. We call ourselves the High Women. I've talked about it here before as well. Um, but that first S in S3 is Sabbath, where we come together in holy convocation to rest and renew and laugh <laughs> and be in community with people who um, are like-minded and are in the same boat together. It is so important to have people around you in your community that understand what it's like to be you. And to be able to Sabbath together on top of that is really something that I'm looking forward to and have been almost craving. I need that community and I'm very excited. So find your community. <laughs> it's, it seems to be a theme here. Find that community that you can rest together and laugh together and be together in, um, in Holy Convocation. Other creative outlets I love, I have found that this podcasting thing um, is so much fun and it helps me to, um, for this particular podcast, Grits in the Gospel, it helps me to um, continue that process of communing with God and being a vessel of things that he wants communicated out in the world. And it just happens to be through me. And so I love this platform for that reason. I have another um, podcast I do with a friend that has, um, we do talk about faith, but it has nothing to do with that. It's just a creative way for us to speak and talk to our friends about um, food and fun things that we do during the week and sports and things um, that I can be creative about and take a um, a little bit of a Sabbath break from the everyday things that I have to do and the job that this can become. And it's uh, a wonderful outlet. I haven't done it in a while, but I also sew. It keeps my hands busy, and I love that very much. Um, so finding ways to be creative is a way for me to Sabbath and to rest. When I am doing something with my hands, my mind cannot be so um, such a busy and chaotic place. Um, so those things I think are also important and can be seen as a way to rest. Taking the time to do things that you love to do that you don't normally have time to do because you work so much. <laughs> and so that is... Um, very important to me is finding those creative outlets in life. Another thing that I really need to do more of, and I'm a, you know, I'm really bad at this. I did it this summer a lot, but uh, I kind of caught up and then I got real bored real quick. <laughs> uh, rest. I need to rest more. I need to renew more. I need to physically stop going. I need to... Um, find that day when I can just stop. Um, that rarely happens in life. It rarely happens in ministry. And I get that that's what I signed up for and that's all fine. But at the same time, part of my work routine should be to stop working. And I think that's the bigger picture of what that law was supposed to be. God was giving us a break. God was providing for us a time where we could stop doing the work and just be. And I find when I just am, when I am still or resting, that that's where I find God the most. And I think he knows that. <laughs> and he provides this for us. Now, just like anything else, this rule was taken to the extreme. Um, it was used against people, but that's not what it originally was for. It was originally because God knew that we were human and we needed that time to stop and slow down 
and be rejuvenated and listen to him too. Renew our relationship with him. I also um, find that it helps to help others find Sabbath. Camp, when I was a keynoter and even as a camper, we had morning watch. And that is a time where you just go and sit and be quiet by the lake. But really, being apart for a, for a week from the world was a whole form of Sabbath unto itself. Turning cell phones off. Not that we had cell phones when I was a camper like that, but being apart, finding community with each other, holy convocation with each other and with God for a whole week is a whole other form of Sabbath. Times of worship, if you ever get the chance to go to a monastery, there's several in Georgia or a, a Greenbrier down in South Georgia. They're not Greenbrier. Um, I'll look it up and put it in the notes. Um, it has left me. Those times when you can go and be apart and be quiet and still um, and have someone make you food. You don't have to do anything. You just show up and commune. <laughs> those things are wonderful. Find those times for yourself. Seek them out. Get creative with how you find rest and relaxation. And sometimes by helping others create Sabbath, it reminds you of ways you can do it for yourself. Or it lets you also Sabbath when they Sabbath. Uh, for instance, at camp, uh, it's a lot to be on the counselor and keynoter side because you're creating those times where you, for them, you're doing it for the campers and that's what you're there to do. But you also have to, if you don't find time for yourself throughout the day, then you will run down. You'll drop <laughs> before the end of the week. So even as a caretaker, even as someone who is helping others find Sabbath, you need to take a moment. Ultimately, we are called to find Sabbath in Jesus. We are called to find Sabbath in our prayer time. We are called to find Sabbath by laying down those things that weigh on us and weigh heavy and that we carry around every day. Matthew 11, Jesus speaks about it when he tells his Father in heaven how thankful he is for him. At the end of Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 through 30, the section is called Jesus Thanks his father. I'm going to leave you with these words today and pray that you will look for new and different ways to find holy convocation and to renew yourself, body and spirit. At the time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me. All you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen and amen.